pumpkin people, Cindy here, and I'm in one of my greenhouses today, and I am going to show you how to install a soil heating cable. And um, my goal is to get the babies planted by the 1st of May, and so I need to uh, handle some things as far as early season protection. It gets pretty cold here where I live um, in the spring, like even in the 30s but 40s are pretty typical even during the day like right now it's in the upper 40s kind of breezy so uh, one of the things i do to protect the seedlings is to install soil heat and um, i do that with a 48 foot cable i've used lots of different cables through the years like um, thick heavy duty ones uh, gutter heating cables but uh, every single year my biggest and best pumpkin or squash comes from just these flimsy orange cables and so that's what I'm gonna go with with all of them this year uh, this one happens to be a 48 footer I think that's a good size um, and let's get started so what I did was I centered where I want to dig I've got the ridge line above me, and so right here where my shovel is, is in the center of the ridge line. And then I'm 18 feet back from the end of the greenhouse. And so I'm gonna dig about three feet on either side of that, so I have a nice wide area because I'm gonna put two plants in here. And then about two feet um, on either side of the shovel going this way. So I'm going to dig eight to 10 inches down and just try to get it pretty uniform. All right, I have got my pit dug out here. I wanna say it's like three feet by eh, maybe four or five feet, four and a half. Um, next step is I'm going to take my pitchfork here and I'm going to just get in here and loosen the soil. And so I start in the corner and I work it in, kind of wiggling it back and forth. And then I just lever it up and pop it up. I'm not trying to turn it over or anything like that. I'm just trying to get that ground loosened where the rototiller didn't dig down. I mean, you can't have enough drainage, I think, when you're growing giant pumpkins. I've got excellent drainage here in my garden because my soil is predominantly sand, but a little more can't hurt. All right, so there's my pit. You can probably kind of see the outline of it there. And what I do, is I get that pitchfork down in there and I just wiggle it down, down, down and then lift it up. Do I look like American Gothic? <laughs> Anyways, I just got that all loosened up and now it's time to lay out the cable. All right, looking into the pit here, you can see how I ran the cable down this way and down that way. And then what you're gonna wanna do is bring it back and then just kinda snake it back and forth and back and forth. And the main consideration is you do not want to cross any lines. Otherwise, it's gonna get too hot and short out, trip your breaker, maybe even burn your plants, especially if you don't have a thermostat on there. All right, so there it is all finished up. You can see how the cable just kind of zigzags back and forth. You can't see it all the time because um, I poke it into the ground a little bit to stabilize it. Now the next step is to mark your planting holes. So there's where I put my two stakes in between a couple of those heating lines and then I'm going to carefully cover it up. Now I'm going to be really soft and gentle on my first few scoops laying the dirt back down because I don't want any of those cables to move. All right we've got the hole totally backfilled and now it's time to plug in the soil heating cable. 
Now like most giant pumpkin growers, I consider myself a bit of an amateur electrician. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but um, after many years of trial and error and tripping breakers and smoking cords, uh, what I found works best uh, with soil heating cables and in your growing enclosure in general is to have one dedicated cord per enclosure and so I've got my um, my line running from the breaker box and then I've got a three-way splitter here and I like to have three different outlets uh, one is going to be for the soil heating cable, but I'm not going to plug the soil heating cable directly into this. I'm going to plug it into this thermostat here. This is just a simple, pretty inexpensive jump start um, thermostat that a lot of us have anyway for our seed starting mats. They work just fine in a greenhouse situation like this. If you tend to get a little um, humid in your greenhouse you might want to cover it up with like a gallon size Ziploc bag or if you do any overhead watering or misting that would be a good idea too. Um, so my soil heating cable is right here. I'm going to plug it into the thermostat which is reading 54.6 degrees. Um, Right now it's set for 88 degrees because last time I used this was in the house. I don't need it that high. I'm going to put it at, oh, 72. Why not? Somewhere in the 70s I think is good. So I'll set that. Right now the ambient temperature is 54 and a half degrees. So I am going to take the um, probe end of this and stick it in the dirt right in between my two stakes here so I can see how well uh, the soil heats up. So I'm going to stick it down, oh I don't know, maybe six to eight inches, maybe about six inches, about uh, where I would plant those um, babies at. And so that's going to give me an idea uh, when it's going to be warm enough to plant. So right now it's 56.3 degrees. It's going up a little bit, 56.4, but um, I can't imagine it's going to go up a whole heck of a lot because uh, it's pretty chilly outside. So I'm just going to probably let this continue heating for the week. I'll get the ends on my greenhouse and then it's going to be planting time. Ah! <laughs>